Loved people of God, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship on this Holy Trinity Sunday, the day we celebrate that God is revealed to us in the Trinity as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For those who will worship using the recording, welcome to Faith Lutheran's worship service. My name is Jane Baker, and I have the privilege of serving this faith community. During the live service, if you have a prayer request, please go ahead and type it in the chat box and then I'll include it in the prayers. Please remember to give your offering uh, to the church either via through the mail or online using the church website or however else you do that. Um, the ministries of the church have continued for the past 15 months, even though we have been meeting online and we are ever grateful for your generous support. If you'd like more information about Faith Lutheran Church, please contact me through our church website, faithroseburg.org. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome. We are a church that shares a living, daring confidence in God's grace. Liberated by our faith, we embrace everyone as a whole person with questions, doubts, complexities, and all. We are moved by God's grace to welcome all who have ever felt marginalized, no matter your gender identity, sexual orientation, age, race, ethnicity, marital status, or faith background. We welcome you as we worship, learn, and share Christ's love together. Let us confess to God and before one another our sins, and especially our failure to wait on God's spirit to lead us. Together, we confess to you, O oh God, and before one another, that we have sinned. Even when we have the best of intentions, we tend to rush into action before we've taken the time to listen for the direction of the spirit. We forget that our viewpoint is limited, and there is much we do not yet know. Help us to wait upon you, O God, so that we may be your faithful people. Amen. God desires good for all of us. Trust in God as you wait upon the Spirit so that all you do will be a blessing to all. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen. The first reading is Psalm 29 from the English Standard Version of the Bible. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a wild young ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in this his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people and may the Lord bless his people with peace. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now the, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, and he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. 
And Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the spirit of the enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said these things to you. You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we've seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the son of man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Grace to you in peace from the triune God. Amen. Dear Nicodemus, you are one of my favorite people in God's story. And I don't claim that lightly because you're a Pharisee. And today being called a Pharisee is not a compliment. So let's just say that, well, you're my favorite Pharisee. I think you were probably just a part-time Pharisee Though I don't know much about you, but it seems to me that you have a good heart and a courageous spirit. Can I call you Nick? Well, since you're a religious leader, you must be a wise man. Well, guess what? I too am a religious leader. And once in a while, someone, someone calls me a wise woman every now and then. Are you shocked? Yes, I said woman. Who would have believed ever? that women are religious leaders in the 21st century. It's true. You know, you can now have a vagina and be a rabbi or be a priest or be a pastor in many traditions. Well, Rome hasn't quite caught up with the times yet, but then you know all about dealing with the Romans. So you probably expect that. Sorry if I caused you to faint there. I am writing you today nearly 2,000 years after you had that conversation with Jesus. I'm a Christian, which means that I'm a follower of Jesus. I understand that that's a dangerous thing for you to talk with Jesus. So how did you ever ditch the other guys in order, in order to do that? I mean, it's my understanding that Pharisees always show up in a group, whether it was it's to question Jesus or to trap him, you know, or throw a sex worker at his feet just to see what he'd do. But not you. You're different. You brought genuine, heartfelt questions to Jesus. And that's why I like you. I hope you full out loud belly laugh when you hear all the ways that Christians have talked about that little chat that you had with Jesus. Often we hear how much you were kind of a blockhead, like why you didn't already know this stuff and how you were afraid that um, 
you know, that's so afraid that you had to skulk around in the dark of night to talk to Jesus. And we say things about well, how Jesus' words confused you. You know, especially as a religious leader, we judge that you should definitely have known better about some of those theological concepts in that conversation. And we all think though that, you know, like we totally get and understand Jesus. We get totally get and understand what he was saying. But Nick, I have to confess, and please don't tell anyone, but Jesus still confuses me a lot of the time. So I think we're kindred spirits. I have to tell you, I really admire that you went to see Jesus, even if it was in the dark of night. If it was because you were embarrassed about what people would say if they heard you asking Jesus questions, or if you were afraid that Jesus might think your questions were dumb, well, then you're just like the rest of us even now. I've done that too. I've had to go ask people about things I should already know. Recently, I had a class I was taking online. And I apologize because explaining what online means, yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. Well, I'll give it a shot. My cat explains it this way. Basically, I sit and look at a, at a window on my desk that's lit up. And through that portal, I can see and talk to people on the other side of the world. And they can see and talk to me. I know, I know, that's pretty far-fetched, but I'm not making this up, I swear. But I digress. I was having a conversation about racism with a person in an online class and the woman had dark skin. Now my skin's very light by the way. And I was asking her some questions about being a black woman in America. And some of my questions were pretty obvious and maybe even rude. But I trusted her and I tried to see life from her lived experience. And she was loving and somewhat patient with me, but she was so, so tired of answering white people's questions about how to solve the problem of racism in America. I learned a lot, but she was probably saying to herself, yeah, that white pastor chick should know better. So Nick, I'm giving you a pass on, your, on that you should have known better thing. Besides, you were very humble calling Jesus a rabbi, even though Jesus was a very controversial and questionable figure in your time. But you showed Jesus respect. Also, the questions you asked, I actually think were super good. This is surely a sign of your wisdom and humble attitude. Nick, the questions you asked have helped Christians for 2,000 years to understand Jesus better. Your trepidation about being born and belonging have been fundamental, fundamental to the Christian life. And if, it's, and if he's, he's still around, would you please let John the baptizer know that we're still doing his baptism thing? You know, water, spirit, and God's word are so much part of Christian life because it's, it's where it all begins, being reborn in the waters of baptism. So here's my takeaway from your talk with Jesus. Your holy conversation was perhaps a kind of nativity story. You see, John, the guy who wrote down your story for us, the story he wrote does not contain a nativity story of the birth of Jesus. But because of you, it has a nativity story of our birth and continued rebirth in the Holy Spirit. Your conversations with Jesus, like Mary's birth narrative, also include a story of a mother's womb and how the Holy Spirit worked through that birth. You must recall Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. A mother's womb carries both the spirit of life, and the waters of life. For Christians, without water, there is no human birth or spiritual birth. Humans and spirit are intertwined, both splashing in living water. 
Today, with other Christians, we are celebrating Holy Trinity Sunday, which always follows the celebration of the day of Pentecost, when the gift of the Holy Spirit is given to God's people. Nick, do you know that Christians all over the world hear your conversation with Jesus on the day that we celebrate the Trinity of God? You wouldn't believe what that band of people following Jesus became. It's called church. And I'm part of the Lutheran church tradition. Lutherans are really big on grace. God extending it to us and then in thanksgiving for that, we extend it to others. Well, you and your Pharisee friends, you should look into that. The church has done many good things for God's people, but it's also hurt people too. We're still a work in progress. And so much has happened to the Jewish people, your people. I'm sorry I don't have time to write more about that because there's so, so much I wish I could tell you. I mentioned the Trinity. This is a Christian belief where God is one in three, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I realize that you would definitely think this is nuts. The Trinity is all about the ways that God loves the world. God is the one who loves, the, the Son is the beloved, and the Spirit is the love shared between them. God's love is too big, too immense, even to be described as the love of a single person, but it's more like the love shared among a community, a love shared so deeply that it can't be contained, but it spills out from the Trinity into the whole world, into our lives, and into all of nature. But for Christians, it's how this relational God moves and speaks and dances and manifests of God's self in the world. In many ways, the Trinity is metaphor for how all living things, God, people, trees, rivers, oceans, animals, coexist together, being different and yet being part of the same. Nick, you remember Psalm 29, right? We all need one another to exist. We are this big wild web of relationship and belonging so how can we understand God the creator if we don't understand God's connection to nature? How can we understand Jesus if we don't understand loving each other? Likewise, the spirit cannot be understood without life-giving water. Nick, this letter is getting longer than I expected. So I'm gonna to have to bring it to a close. But before I do, I want to mention something Jesus said to you at the end of your conversation, because it became one of the most well-known sayings of Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. These words have been used over the centuries to caution people to turn away from their sins so they may enjoy eternal life with the triune God. And sadly, these words have been used to scare people to Jesus. Nick, you know that isn't how Jesus rolls. Okay, he was a little snarky with you, but you know Jesus still loved you. And he still loved you as you tried to grow in knowledge and love and hope. And we know you know he loved you because you helped Joseph of Arimathea bury Jesus after he was killed. It's such a shame that many Christians leave off the words that follow that well-known verse. These words, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him, saved, not condemned. I think it's time for us to understand that the eternal life promised by Jesus is connected to the life we live now. The eternal life promised by Jesus that comes through the presence of the spirit can only be understood if it's fully saturated in the waters of our world and the waters of baptism and the water of new life from the wombs of women. Nick, I know you're an expert on the book of Genesis. Remember at creation, it says the spirit of God hovered over the life-giving and life-sustaining waters. 
Why am I saying that? Because my friend, our world is running out of water right now. We know this because Wall Street, okay, that's those people and big corporations who control the financial life of the world in our century. Well, they are now investing in, you guessed it, water. We're in a grim situation and we're scared. Our rivers are drying, our ice caps are melting, and we'll be burning soon. I believe that this situation is because the spirit is sad and disappointed in our stewardship of the earth. Jesus said to you and to us, the spirit blows where it chooses. The spirit blows where it chooses. When the spirit takes a step back from the world, the water starts to disappear as well. Oh, Nicodemus, we need to get the courage to care for the water so that the spirit will breathe on us again and sustain life. We must start to relate the life of the Trinity that is the life of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit with every living thing on earth so that we can relate together, we can eat together, dance together, breathe together, live together. More than ever, we need to gain a new awareness of the spirit as well as of the water so that we can finally understand the eternal love that God has for every living thing in this world and then live into the beauty of that mystery. Thank you, Nicodemus, for having the courage to seek Jesus on that starry night so long ago. You rock. Sincerely, your friend and fellow part-time Pharisee, Jane. Amen.
as we gather in our homes yet together on this festival of the Holy Trinity, let us pray to the triune God, responding to each petition with the words, Holy God, we praise your name. The readers will say, and, and together we pray, and the congregation response is, Holy God, we praise your name. O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for the church we pray that all leaders of the church be strengthened for their ministries, that theologians manifest the triune mystery for our time, and that all the baptized be renewed in faith. And together we pray, Holy God, we praise your name. O oh God, creator, gardener, and keeper, for the earth we pray, that the earth's mighty waters be cleansed, that cedars and oak trees be nurtured, and that the wilderness be protected. And together we pray, holy God, we praise your name. Amen. O God, fortress, monarch, and protector, for the nations we pray, that the leaders of nations enact justice for all their people, that prejudice against those of different nationality or skin color or language cease, and that democracy flourish around the globe. And together we pray, holy God, we praise, we praise your name. O oh God, judge, peacemaker, and shield, for peace we pray that all people shun the use of violence, and that on this Memorial Day weekend, in remembrance of all the soldiers and civilians who have died in warfare, humankind maintain peace between nations on our streets and in our homes. And together we pray, Holy God, we praise Holy your name. Holy God, we praise your name. O oh God, healer, God. mother, nurse, for the sick we pray. At the pandemic end, that vaccines be fairly distributed and that suffering be comforted and that those who are ill be made whole and that you visit those we name here. Mark A, Amanda B, Grady B, Sue C, Karen F, Shauna H, M J, Don M, Phil N, Rachel P, Sue P, Carol Q, Nick R, Ken R, Stephanie R, Sarah and family, Sunny S, Jim T, Skip T, Jerry W, Pastor Shelley, and those whose names we call out to you now. May they know your healing light and love, and together we pray. Holy God, we praise your name. We praise your name. O oh God, wisdom, we pray for those affected by gun violence in our nation. Comfort all who have lost loved ones and all who have been injured. Give lawmakers wisdom and courage to make sensible laws to protect children and other innocents from this devastating violence. And together we pray, holy God, we praise your name. O oh God of the Trinity, receive our praise for all the faithful who have gone before us, that at the end we join with all the saints to dance with your Holy Trinity. And together we pray, Holy, Holy God, we praise your name. Into your endless love, we commend all for whom we pray trusting as Jesus did in your grace and might now and forever. Amen. The peace of Amen. Christ be with you all. Let us unmute ourselves and share with you. Together. Hello, peace. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Peace to all. Peace be with morning. you, everybody. Peace to everyone from Sacramento. Peace, everyone. Oh, look at you, Jeff, for the night. <laughs> I love. Happy birthday, Ernie. The Mr. Hill this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you all. So, and peace be with all of you. 
Also with you. Also with you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. Please go ahead and give yourselves. It is right. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ, and send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Savior with a loving faith as Jesus comes to us in this Holy Supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his friends, those who loved him and those who would betray him. And as they ate, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body and it's given for you. And do this, remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you, and it's shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. Remember me. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us and bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people and fill us with your light and bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please go ahead and unmute yourselves. As gathered into the Spirit as we pray here on Zoom, it's messy to pray on unison on Zoom, but that's just how we roll. We trust that God always meets us in our midst. Our Father in heaven, heaven. hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom, your kingdom come, your, your will, will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, us this day, day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us, Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of the universe, now and forever. Amen. Go ahead and mute yourself. Beloveds, even as we are communing in our homes, we are still together. Here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Please share the body and blood of Christ with the ones you are with using these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are alone, please commune with me now. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Receive these words of blessing. As we go from this place of worship, help us remember that this beautiful universe is so diverse and yet is also intertwined and connected. May we live the idea that Trinity is not only a metaphor for how God relates to us, but it's a metaphor for how all living things are to coexist together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some announcements this morning. Uh, just a reminder that you can always worship with family and friends simply by sharing the Zoom link with them. Just paste it into an email and then they can join in as well.
Dwelling in the Word Bible Study uh, meets on Thursdays, and it will meet this Thursday at 11.30 a.m. This Friday is the Lunch and Learn at noon. And since May is Asian American Pacific Islander Awareness Month, we will be watching and discussing the documentary Oregon's Japanese Americans. It focuses on uh, Japanese people in, in uh, Portland and in Hood River. Join us on Zoom, bring your lunch this Friday at noon, and then and we will share that link again with you later in the week. It was in the Friday email, but we will send it out again to remind you. The transition team is working on a plan so that we can resume meeting in person again soon. Unfortunately, it will not be next Sunday as we had hoped. Know that it's coming, it's coming soon, and we are planning to hold outdoor worship services this summer. Thank you, thank you for your patience. We're getting there, but there's a lot to do first. So we'll keep you up, uh, up to date on now how we're, that's progressing till we get there. And, and we will, I'm certain we will. <laughs> are there other announcements this morning? Sharon, go ahead and unmute yourself. Well, that was a great segue, Pastor. Um, we. We are eagerly working towards reopening the church and in-person worship. But before we want to do that, one of the, some of the tasks we have to do is cleaning up our grounds and uh, the exterior of the building. And so we're looking for help um, with the flower beds, uh, removing cobwebs from the exterior of the building. We have some painting we want to do, just uh, mostly metal posts of the porticos. So if you'd like to help us uh, move towards reopening, um, email me or call me. Uh, my info is in the directory. We'd love to have any and all help, especially, you know, maybe the Fergusons from Colorado <laughs> and the Townsies who are in, uh, you know, Sacramento. Uh, but we'll take any help we can get. And Barb, Barb and Dean, you guys yeah, can come yeah, back. Them too, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, please give me a call. We'd, we'd love to have everyone help participate in reopening the, the church. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. And like I said, there's there's things technologically we have to be working on, and we are working on those things right now. So we're going to get there. But if you want to help speed this up, volunteer to help. We appreciate it. Any other announcements this morning? All right. Well, go in peace. Live God's love in the world. And let me set up some breakout rooms so we can visit with each other.